We have the victory. How many know you got the victory? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say now you have to be. Come on. Tell me who can stand before us when we come. That name. That great. Who is it? Jesus. 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 Precious Jesus. We have. This is my favorite part. Victory, we go. Oh, victory. Come on, y'all. We're going to win, y'all. We have. We have. In spite of how it looks, we got the victory. Victory. In spite of how you feel. We have. We have. Come on, sing that one more time. In the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Say that, say that you have to be. Come on, y'all. Tell me, tell me who can stand before us when we call out that great name. Jesus, 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 precious. We have, we have the victory. Now let's act like we got the victory. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. In spite of how you feel right now, you got the victory. I don't know what anybody faces come Monday, but guess what? We got the victory, right? That's power in the name of what? Jesus. Amen. Y'all can be seated. I want my sister Lita to come in. Yeah. <laughs> well, guess what? Amen. Let's give God a hand too. I want my sister Lita to come and she's going to bless us. Can we allow the Holy Spirit to bless us today? And I, I really, you know, as, as, as black people, and I, I travel this country, and I travel, you know, we're very emotional, you know. And I do Caucasian weddings, funerals, and it's, there's just a difference, and, 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 and we all worship the same God. But, but there's some times that we have to put our emotions to the side and listen to the words. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And, and, and allow these words to minister to your heart, because I don't know what anyone's going through. Amen. And that's why we have to be very mindful of one another that will allow God's love to flow through us. Is that okay? Amen. Uh -huh. As I journey through this land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crib. my soul turn my thoughts aside oh but my love goes ahead leads whatever time oh, oh I want to see
Come on and join in with me. Let's give God some praise. And I thank you, Lord. And I praise you, Lord. Because you've been so good. Yeah, you've been so good. And I thank you, Lord. And I praise you, Lord. Because you set my soul. Yeah, yeah, you set my soul. And you've been a doctor. You've been my lawyer. You've been my heart fixer and a man. You made a way. You made the blind to see and the lame to walk. Even made the dumb to talk. Oh, I thank you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. And I praise you, Lord. Because you set my soul. Yeah, you set my soul. And I thank you, Lord. And I praise you, Lord. Because you set my soul. Yeah, yeah, you set my soul. And you've been a doctor. You've been a lawyer. You've been my heart. You made a way. You made the blind to see and the lame to walk. Even made. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Lord, I want to thank you. You made a way for me. Lord, I want to thank you. You've been a fence all around me. You laid the foundation, made the way plain. Brought me out of sin and shame. Oh, and I thank you, Lord. Yeah, I thank you, Lord. And I praise you, Lord. Because you've been so good. Yeah, yeah, you've been so good. And I thank you, Lord. And I praise you, Lord. Because you set my soul. Yeah, yeah, you set my soul. And you've been a doctor. You've been my lawyer. Lord, you've been my heart fixer. You made a way. You made the blind to see and the lame to walk. You made the dumb to talk. Oh, got anything to thank him for? Yeah, I thank you, Lord. And I praise you, Lord. Because you've been so good. Yeah, yeah, you've been so good. And I thank you, Lord. And I praise you, Lord. Because you set my soul. Yeah, you set my soul. Yeah, you set my soul. Yeah, you set my soul. And you've been my doctor. You've been my lawyer. Lord, you've been my heart. You made a way. Oh, and I thank you, Lord. Come on, y'all. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Because you set my soul. Yeah, 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 you set my soul. And you've been my doctor. You've been my lawyer. You've been my heart. You made a way. You made the blind to see and the lame to walk. Even made the dumb to talk. Thank him. Give the Lord a hand praise. He's been good. Everybody made it here today. Didn't no accidents. Didn't nobody run no stop signs. God is good. We didn't have to be here. There's nothing we did that's so good that we deserved another day. But we're here to praise and worship him. We are thankful to the choirs for their song service this morning. As they were singing uh, on the streets of glory, I'm going to lift my voice. Cares are past. I'll be home at last. Never, ever to rejoice. The Bible teaches that the Christian have dual citizenship. In the book of Philippians, when Paul was writing to the church at Philippi, 
and they was a citizen of the Roman Empire, and yet and still they was a citizen of the country that they lived in. But one day, the citizenship means that one day they're going to give up that dual citizenship and their citizenship of their home will be in heaven. So we have a dual citizenship and one day we're going to give it up and we're going to be just at home. Cares are past. And then they were singing, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never, never lose its power. The musician director was asking me about song for today. And normally I do give the director a song, but I told him that uh, whatever the Lord had put on his heart as the Spirit of God, uh, that will be great. And I'm so grateful I didn't give him anything because it fit right in with our message for today. To our pastor, our lecturer, and his absent, and his family, we pray God that they are really enjoying their vacation because we know when we go on vacation and it's over, then we're coming back to work. So when he comes back, he's going to be well rested and he's going to be ready to work. And to my poor pits uh, associate today, Reverend uh, Carter, Reverend Willis, and my good friend from Friendly Temple, um, uh, Brother Reverend Hodges, to our deacon board, uh, Reverend De uh, Deacon Cl uh, Gray, the official staff, mothers, Christian friends, visitors. I'm indeed grateful to God to stand here at this hour to give you a portion of God's word. And as I say many times, I could stand here three or four hours and never tell it all. But I say just a portion. Uh, we're going to see from the message today and from the article in, the, in, the, uh, in our bulletin from the uh, uh, minister's uh, meditation and they're all dealing with communion service. And if you notice the scripture that was read, okay, it was still taken from the 11th chapter of uh, 1 Corinthians and it was dealing with the Lord's Supper. Our scripture uh, for this morning message will also be dealing from, with the Lord's Supper, still from the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians. And we're gonna read uh, verses 27 uh, uh, 234. So let us stand and read uh, from the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians verses uh, 27 through 34. <clears throat> Verse 27, Wherefore, whosoever should eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, generic return for man or woman, a Christian, examine themselves, and so let them eat that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drank is unworthily, eateth and drank is uh, damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man is hungry, let him eat at home, that he may come not unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. You may be seated. We're going to use for a thought this morning, it's all in the blood. It's all in the blood. The Apostle Paul here writing to the church at Corinth, 
about communion service. The church at Corinth was the most cliquish church in the world. Envy, strife, and division was in that church. When you read the first Corinthian and you find that there was division, some say they were the follower of Paul. Some say they were the follower of Apollos. Some say they were the follower of Peter. And some say they were the follower of Jesus Christ. And in that church, there were some people that were not even saved. And they were saying that the Apostle Paul was not a true apostle. But the Apostle Paul had a commission from God to criticize the church when they were doing wrong. And some said that, oh, Paul wrote, he could write a, a bad letter, but he, in person, he would be a, 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 a weak person. Some said he was not a good speaker and he was not a preacher of God's word. But the Apostle Paul had them to understand, I don't care what you say, I know that I have been commissioned by the Lord to preach his word and correct the church when they are wrong. And one of the things that they was doing wrong here in our text at the communion service, envy, strife, and division. Now here in this 11th chapter in dealing with the church, he is not dealing with the unsaved in the church. He is dealing with spiritual Christian and carnal Christian coming to this table. Try to picture in your mind that when they have the communion, had the communion service, they will set a time of the day, whatever time it was, one o'clock, two o'clock, the Bible doesn't say. But then uh, the rich, would get to the place of worship an hour or two before communion service. And they would bring what they would call a communion meal, a God paid meal to eat before the Lord's Supper. But they would get there early. Let's say that if you were going upstairs here and you're going to have communion service at a certain time, and they would get there perhaps an hour and a half early, the rich, all that exotic food. And they set up their table in the corner by themselves. The middle class would set up a table by themselves across the hall. And there was the poor that couldn't bring anything and they were sitting on the outside, or sitting on the side looking and suffer with missed meal cramps. And no one would invite them to come to their table and eat. And Paul says, those rich, eating the best food, bring their alcoholic beverage to church to eat before communion service. And then when it came time for communion service, say, many of you are drunk. And he says that, you think I'm gonna praise you for what you are doing? I praise you not. And this is where our text come, and come in. There are five things that we want to uh, get from this sermon today. In verse 17, Paul rebuked them for the way that the Corinthians were celebrating the Lord's Supper. Two, verses 18 through 22, the corruption of the Lord's Supper. Three, verses 23 to 26, the real meaning of the Lord's Supper. Four, verses 27 through 30, the severe consequences of partaking unworthily the Lord's Supper. He is talking to the common Christians. Then, verses 31 through 34, the right approach to the Lord's Supper the right approach. If you have never read 
1 Corinthians 11 chapter, beginning with the 17th verse. We encourage you to, be, to do so. Don't ever think that there are not some division and cliques in the average church. The big eyes and the little youth. But the Apostle Paul is telling the Christian, examine yourselves. Because if you don't examine yourself, the Lord is going to chastise you. You will come into this table with the wrong motive. There should be unity instead of division. In the 17th chapter of John, when the Lord was getting ready to go to the cross, he prayed for the church for unity, that they will be one in essence as me and the Father, not one in the same purpose, person. The Father had a job to do, the Son had a job to do, and the Holy Spirit had a job to do. But they were together in unison, and we in the church, do you know that the church, I'm not talking about Pleasant Green, West Side, but I'm talking about the body of Christ. The church composed of every born again believer, no matter where you live in this universe. We got to learn how to love one another. The book of John tell us, first John, if you love him who begot, which is a father, you love those who have begotten of the father. In other words, if you love the father, you're going to love your sibling. The church is the most diverse group of peoples in the world, the body of Christ. Some rich, some poor, some black, some white, speaking different languages, but it doesn't make any difference. If you have been born into the family of God, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Many times, we as black Christians, we can talk about uh, segregation and how they hate us, but we have a problem right here in River City. But yet and still, we come to this table and God is not pleased with what we are doing. Looking down on one another. There's an old saying says that when you look down on someone, make sure you're giving them a hand to lift them up. But we are looking down and put our foot on them and want them to stay down. But yet and still we say we are Christians. Division. Notice what he said again. The 24th verse. For when he had uh, given thanks, he said that the night that he was betrayed, read the gospel. After they had celebrated the Passover meal, and he made the statement, one of you are going to betray me, one is going to deny me. He was talking about Julius Carey. And he said, what thou do is do it quickly. Well, Judah participated in that uh, Passover meal, but Judah was gone when he celebrated the Lord's Supper. What am I saying? The Lord's Supper is not for unsaved peoples. But an unsaved purpose, person can participate without any chastisement from God. To them, it's just a ritual. Huh? In the 12th chapter of Hebrew, the Lord had uh, the writer to write, I do not chastise a person who is not my child. So an unsaved person can participate in communion service. Nothing to his advantage, and neither going to do him any harm. It's just a ritual. But here in our text, the Lord had Paul to write to the Christians, those who are spiritually and those who are carnal. 
But the Apostle Paul wants us to realize that we are to examine ourselves to make sure that we are not habitually living in sin. If you keep coming to this table, living in sin, participating in the communion service, the Lord said that I'm going to have to chastise you. But if you judge yourself and admit your mistakes, then you use First John 1 John 1.9. Right here in this church, before we start a communion service, he telling the Christian, examine yourself. And if you keep coming to this table without examining yourself according to God's word, then I will have to chastise or chasten you. My friend, God does not enjoy chastising his children. But sometimes it is necessary. Said in the 12th chapter of Hebrew, no father enjoy chastising his children. But the child keep doing wrong. The Bible doesn't tell us how long it's going to take God to start his chastising. But God says eventually, I don't chastise you for punitive sake. I don't chastise you for doing wrong. I chastise you for correction. You see, we can be doing wrong. And God's word keep telling us to examine yourself. God going to one day get tired. The Bible doesn't say how long it's going to take. But God's patience runs out. And then he has to chastise. Notice that closely. Then he said, the spiritual Christian, they are there to set an example to the weak Christian that are living in sin, that how it pays to serve Jesus. It pays every day. It pays every step of the way. God has fixed it so that we have a direct access to the throne of God. Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are no more enemies of God. And 5, 2 says, we have a direct access to the throne of God for ourselves. When we examine ourselves, the Bible says, you can do that right here in this service. You know you're wrong. You've been doing wrong. God has warned you. If you keep warned, he's going to chastise you, but we don't know how long it's going to take. But if we confess our